All right, Matt, can you hear me all right? I hear you fine, Beth. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Beth Nash. I am the testing measurement specialist for math and science here at um, NCDPI. And we will be joined by um, several other folks today, uh, one of which, or one of whom is my, uh, my colleague, Dan Almond, who is the test measurement specialist for reading. Uh, we also have Matt Copeland for Metametrics and his partner, Jane Scott, will also be with us. NCDPI partners with Metametrics to provide Lexile and Quantiles for our EOGs and our EOCs. And through this partnership, teachers across the state have free access to a wonderful resource called the Lexile and Quantile Hub. The Hub is a one-stop shop where teachers can find lots of resources to support learning both in and out of the classroom. And did I mention it's totally free? Before I turn it over to Matt to show you how to access the Hub and what resources are included, um, I am going to go over a couple quick housekeeping items. Um, the first is that everyone is muted due to the size of our call. Um, we do have um, about 200 folks signed up for our webinar today. We are recording our webinar and tomorrow anyone who registered will receive um, access to that recording via an email. And then that way, if, um, if something happened and, and folks were signed up and, and something came up, or um, if it's something that you would maybe like to share with your PLT, you'll have access to the recording. You can freely share it with your colleagues. Um, and we'll also make sure that we copy um, all of the great links that our Metametrics friends will be dropping in the chat. I'll keep record of those for you. And when we send out the email, we'll include all of that information. Um, we are not offering any CEUs for participation in the webinar today, and that is either um, for watching live or watching the recording. Um, as we mentioned, Matt's colleague Jane will be with us, and as Matt presents, Jane will be dropping links in the chat. If you have questions, please uh, feel free to use the, um, the chat and the Q&A features. And with that, Matt, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, thank you so much, Beth, and, and good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to join you um, for this introductory tour for the Lexile and Quantile Hub. Uh, this is really a pleasure for us to be able to share this information with you all. And, and like Beth said, everything you're about to see here today is provided to you uh, because of the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction's relationship with Metametrics. Everything you're about to see is completely free to every educator across the state uh, of North Carolina. So give me just a moment here while I share my screen. And if somebody could give me a thumbs up, Beth or Jane, somebody to let me know that I did all this correctly. I'm always a little <laughs> curious. You're good, Matt. All right, thank you very much. Um, again, my name is Matt Copeland. I'm the director of Educator engagement and implementation here at Metametrics. Um, with me today is Jane Scott. Uh, Jane is our director of Lexile Learning. Uh, and you see a third member uh, of our party, of our little three amigo group here, uh, Dave Barnes. Dave is unfortunately out of the office today. Um, to be quite candid, he's on vacation. And I'm so jealous, I can't even mention where, he, where he's vacationing because it just, it causes me too much uh, chaos and anxiety. So uh, Dave is not with us today, but feel free at any time, if you have questions about any of the tools that I'm introducing, um, email one of the three of us or all three of us, and we'll be happy to kind of walk you through that information uh, and help you with any problems that you have. So a, a quick overview of our next hour or so together. Uh, we'll begin with a very quick review of Lexile measures in the Lexile framework for reading. And then as quickly as possible, we're gonna move right into accessing the hub. I'm sure many of you have visited before. Um, if so, great. If, if this is your first time, not a problem. We'll walk you through that process and make sure that you can get connected. But we'll also talk about how when you are in the hub, where you can go to find the support that you may need in terms of some introductory um, tutorials about accessing the tools or utilizing the tools. But then really the bulk of this presentation 
is going to be introducing the Lexile tools that are available to all of you to utilize in your role as an educator in North Carolina. Whether you are a classroom teacher, whether you are a building principal, whether you are a, a curriculum leader, whether you are an assessment coordinator, it really doesn't matter. I think within the Lexile and Quantile Hub, you're going to find a variety of different tools that help you to accomplish your roles and responsibilities um, in, in your job. So very quickly, um, let me do a quick overview. This is probably a refresher for many of you, uh, but for any of you who may be new to Lexile measures, um, let me give you a quick nutshell of what this is all about. Uh, for any football fans out there, I call this my two minute drill and I'll try to keep it to just about two minutes. So the Lexile framework for reading is what the psychometricians refer to as a conjoined scale. And what they mean by that is they take two seemingly very different things and they measure them using the exact same yardstick. So as you see here on this slide, on the left-hand side, uh, we see a young lady that has a Lexile reader measure of 770L. You always know a Lexile measure because it's a number followed by that capital letter L. So this young lady with this 770L Lexile measure describes her reading ability on that Lexile scale, that Lexile yardstick. Similarly, on the right-hand side, um, we have a Lexile text measure, which measures the sentences, the vocabulary, the paragraphs present in any book or piece of text. And so you see that in this case, Sharon Creech's novel Walk Two Moons also has a Lexile measure of 770L. And so what that tells us is that this is a good match between the complexity of the text of the book and this young lady's reading ability. Stop and think about that old Goldilocks fairy tale for just a moment. Goldilocks goes into the cabin. She first sits down in a chair that's too soft, then sits in a chair that's too hard, and then sits in a chair that's just right. Same concept, but applied here to reading material. Books that are not too hard, not too easy, but just right. In other words, this young lady, when she sits down to read Sharon Creech's Walk Two Moons, she's going to find enough familiar vocabulary and enough simple sentence structure to make reading comfortable. And yet, enough new vocabulary and enough more complex sentence structure to continue growing her reading ability over time. In other words, this is a perfect match. This is a, a, a just right fit between the child's reading ability and the difficulty of, of the text. Similarly, we talk about this on the quantile side as well. And if you're interested in that, join, uh, tune in tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we'll do a very similar tour of the quantile tools that are available for mathematics as well. So the first question we often get is, well, where do I get these Lexile measures that describe my students' reading ability? First and foremost, you get them directly from your North Carolina end of grade or end of course assessments. Every student, in addition to their scale score from that assessment, receives a Lexile measure that describes their reading ability on that scale. Additionally, at the local level, your school or your district may be using an interim benchmark assessment that also uh, reports a Lexile measure. Excuse me just a second. I apologize, the, uh, the fall allergy season is, is landed in my throat by all, uh, all uh, cases and purposes. In addition to that, there are also some uh, instructional programs that report a Lexile measure as well. So if you're using something like Achieve 3000 or something of that nature, you may be accessing Lexile measures from that regard. So in many ways, you may, your students may actually have multiple Lexile measures, even in the course of a given school year. And they are phenomenal 
and their ability to monitor growth and track progress over time. Because of regardless of the different assessments you may be using, you have this single common scale that helps you to track how that child is doing over time. But again, as I said, most importantly, you all are receiving these Lexile measures um, from the North Carolina end of grade assessments in grades three through eight, but also the end of course assessment in English two, and also the ACT assessment as well. So regardless of which of those three tests a student is taking, you have a Lexile measure that you can utilize not only to track that growth, but also to access a variety of different texts and information at that child's unique level. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Accessing resources, accessing text at each child's unique ability level based on their Lexile measure. So very quickly here, um, you can see down here near the bottom right corner uh, of this graphic. Uh, let's see if I can make this work for you all. Um, here's my little pointer. And you'll see the student's Lexile measure based, on, again, on their performance on the North Carolina end of grade and end of course uh, assessments. So how are these measures valuable? How can they be utilized by classroom teachers? Um, first and foremost, they help us predict um, a student's comprehension rate of text. When we look at the student's reader measure and we compare that to the lexile measure of text, its difficulty, we can actually calculate roughly what, how much of that book that child is going to comprehend. But maybe more importantly, it really gives us the opportunity to begin to differentiate our instruction in the classroom. We know in any given classroom, we have a wide variety of student reading abilities. And it doesn't matter if we teach language arts or science or social studies or, or mathematics or career and tech ed or whatever the content area may be, we are constantly asking students to read text. But when we know how diverse their abilities really are, we can begin to think about how we might differentiate those texts or differentiate our instruction to help each child be successful. And as I said before, these measures also monitor growth and, and can track progress over time, particularly toward our goals for college and career readiness. And so one of the things I'm gonna show you here in just a little bit is that we've actually measured the kinds of texts that employees are asked to read in different occupations. So when a child answers that age old question, well, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And that child says, well, I, I, I wanna be a police officer. We can actually point you to the kinds of texts that a police officer reads and the difficulty of those texts on the Lexile scale. So the child can even then begin to visualize, where am I now? Where do I want to be, to be prepared to be a police officer? And then as educators and families, we engage in that all important conversation. How do I get there? How do I get to the place that I wanna be? So as a reader, I'm prepared for my career as a police officer really important. So let's jump to the star of the show. And here today, uh, let's help everyone gain access to the Lexile and Quantile Hub. And so I would encourage you all, if you're comfortable with multitasking, uh, this is something I don't do extremely well, but if you're comfortable with it, by all means, go ahead and launch a browser and go to hub.lexile.com. Again, that's hub.lexile.com. Dot com. And if you're the kind of person like me who prefers to kind of sit back and just watch someone else do this first, uh, you do not need to launch that browser. Feel free to just watch along. And then sometime later this afternoon or this evening or whenever you have the time, um, venture to this website and, and poke around yourself and do some of that. In fact, uh, at the end of this webinar, 
we'll give you a few minutes uh, to poke around in, in what I like to call play in the sandbox uh, of the Lexile and Quantile Hub and see all that it has to offer. So give me just a moment and I'm going to actually exit my PowerPoint and I'm gonna take you all uh, to a live shot of the Lexile and Quantile Hub um, so that you all can kind of follow along uh, with what I'm doing. So what you are seeing now is a live shot of kind of the, uh, the main uh, home screen of the Lexile and Quantile Hub. And we'll talk a little bit about the various elements that are here in, in just a moment. But the most important thing that you can do if you haven't done so already is register an account here at the Lexile and Quantile Hub. Again, this is provided for free for every educator in the state of North Carolina. And folks always ask, why do I need to register an account? And really there are some very simple, basic reasons. Number one, um, we need to ver validate that you are in fact what you say you are, which is an educator in the state of North Carolina. In order to get the free access uh, that we owe you, um, please register an account. That's how we validate that you are an educator. Otherwise, it would cost you $17.99 a year uh, for this very same access. But again, because of the relationship between North Carolina DPI and Metametrics, you get this for free automatically. So what you see here on this register page, and again, I click this purple register button in the upper right hand corner, provide us some very, very basic information. First of all, share with us your email address. And again, what's really, really important is that you use your school email address. Don't use your personal email, whether that's Gmail or Yahoo or AOL or whatever that may be. The way that we validate that you are an educator is by looking at your email address. So please use your school email address when you register. But from there, it's very, very simple. You create a password, you confirm that password, and then identify yourself as a teacher in the state of North Carolina. And it's also very important that you click on this educator tab um, to do that. Many of us, we think, well, we're parents, you click on parent. If you click on parent, you won't get that free access to all the various bells and whistles. The only way you get those is if you click on educator and you provide us that school email address. That's what gives you that educator access so that you can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in uh, to the Lexile and Quantile Hub. And you'll notice that when you do so, uh, that you will see this icon in the upper left-hand corner. You see the North Carolina postal abbreviation and the silhouette of the state. This communicates that you are indeed logged in correctly as a North Carolina educator. If a parent logs into the hub, if a student visits the hub, they will not see this icon in the upper left-hand corner. This is the designation that you are logged in as an editor in the state of North Carolina. So again, this main page for all of these various tools, you will notice a number of things. And again, today we're gonna focus on the Lexile tools for reading. Tomorrow, uh, I'll be back again to focus on the Quantile tools for, for mathematics. But what you see here, as I scroll down, is that each of the tools is identified by what we call a tool card. And the tool card basically uh, provides the name of the tool. It identifies the intended audience, whether the tool is designed for educators, for parents, for students, or some combination thereof. And it gives you a quick description of what that tool actually does. So for example, here in this first card, you see that the tool is find a book. It's for educators, parents, and students. And you can see that it really helps identify books by grade, by interest, 
and by reading complexity that a child may want to read. So most importantly, each of these tool cards is in fact a link. And so when I click on find a book, I'm taken directly to the find a book tool. And I'll actually begin um, my tour, tour here of the tools here in, in just a moment. But let me go back um, to that main page for just a second, uh, because I wanna point out um, the left-hand navigation bar. And this left-hand navigation bar can be really, really important um, for a couple of reasons. And one of the reasons is the link at the very, very bottom that says support. And this is a link to our support community in case you ever need help with any of these tools or with any additional information about either Lexile measures or quantile measures. And so when you click on that support link, uh, you'll notice that we have several buckets uh, of information, if you will. Um, if you need help with your, your Hub account, you can find that in, in this bucket. If you need help with the Lexile tools, um, you can find that here. Um, you can find more information about our research, and, and you can even find more information about the Educator Academy courses if you really want to take a deep dive into how to utilize these measures and these tools in, in your classroom. There is a search field up here at the top. Um, if you just need basic help with how do I use the Lexile Analyzer, you can type that in and, and get a list of results. And likewise, at the very bottom, if you're not finding uh, what you're looking for, you're not finding the help that you need, um, you can actually contact Hub Support, which will generate an email to all of us here at Metametrics so that we can help you um, utilize these tools and get the most bang for your buck, if you will, uh, on how we do this. So please don't overlook that support community. There are a lot of great resources and a lot of great information uh, that you can take advantage of right there within the Lexile and Quantile Hub. But let me dig in, uh, and I want to walk you all through the various Lexile tools um, that you all have at your fingertips. And as I said before, the first tool I want to demo is our Find a Book tool. And again, in a nutshell, uh, this is a tool designed to help students identify, one, books that they want to read. In other words, books that are written about topics they're interested in but also books that are in their Lexile zone. If we think back to our, our, our undergrad days, we probably learned about uh, the researcher Vygotsky and his zone of proximal development. Well, the Lexile zone is, is something very similar. It's that just right match between a child and his or her uh, reading ability and the difficulty of text. So you'll notice here, um, I, I may be an educator using find a book, and I just want to see um, what the Lexile measure of a certain title might be. Well, I can use the quick search function to do that. So if I'm teaching To Kill a Mockingbird, I can type in that title and click search, and it takes me to a results list. And here it is To Kill a Mockingbird, and it tells me that to Kill a Mockingbird has a Lexile measure of, of 790L. So um, that quick search feature is available there uh, for those of you that want to use that um, very quickly and easily to find the Lexile measure of a text. Or, or maybe you're looking at, at what Lexile um, measured texts are available for a particular author, or, or you're looking at a, a subject matter or a keyword. Um, that's all available to educators there um, in that quick search field. But as I said, uh, find a book is really designed for, for students. And so the student or the family or the educator can enter a, a particular Lexile measure on that child if they know it. So for example, I can enter 750 to represent 750 Lexiles. And it generates that Lexile zone that Lexile range that we talked about earlier 
that zone of, of proximal development. Or if I don't have that Lexile measure at my fingertips, uh, I don't have my student score report, I, I don't have access uh, to the portal for whatever reason, I can estimate a child's Lexile measure by identifying their grade level and then identifying whether that student finds reading at school to be easy, difficult, or, or just right. And based on the grade level and that Goldilocks question, if you will, um, we can estimate a, a Lexile range. But as I said, what's probably most important is students reading about topics and books they're interested in reading about. So as you see here, I've identified sixth grade as an example student. And in my mind, I'm using one of my own daughters um, here as an example. And I know that, that she really likes to read books um, that are humorous. And so I can go in to the general literature category, and then I can select the subcategory of humor. And basically, when I click on search, what the find a book tool is going to do, it's gonna pull up all the titles that are on her Lexile zone and that are humorous. And so you can see here, our find a book tool, which scours about a quarter of a million different books has found 1,156 books that meet that criteria. And so she can scroll through, or I can scroll through with her, uh, all of these various titles. If I click on the title, again, I can see a, a short description of the book. I can see its Lexile measure. And even instructionally, I can see additional information. So this particular book, Fluff Dragon, at a 770L, uh, it, I did, the system identifies um, vocabulary that might trip up a 770L reader sitting down to read this book. Words in this instance like inconceivable or convention or, or retract. And notice that as I click on these words, the system provides me a definition for what that word actually means. And if I click on indicators, instructionally, I can see a little bit more about what gives this particular title its 770 Lexile measure. So it looks primarily at two things, sentence length and word frequency. And for those of you with a deeper understanding of Lexile measures, you know that those are the two things we look at to calculate that lexile measure of text, sentence length and the difficulty of vocabulary. In other words, how often that appears um, in, in a certain text compared to our overall corpus. And so what you can see here is that Fluff Dragon is actually more complex in terms of sentence length than it is in terms of vocabulary. So that might help me to think instructionally. If Fluff Dragon is a book that I'm teaching, I might wanna spend a little bit more time um, breaking down those long sentences than I do just in teaching the vocabulary because students are gonna encounter longer, more complex sentences than they are compared to other books that have the same 770 Lexile measure. So instructionally, um, the find a book tool presents us a great deal of information um, that we might utilize to help our students um, be successful with these books, whether we are matching them with different kinds of text or whether we're finding ways to provide that instructional scaffolding to help them be successful with those, those different elements. So I wanna go back to find a book here uh, and particularly talk um, about some of the other aspects um, that we can do here with the find a book tool. Because when we measure a book here at Metametrics, we not only calculate in many instances, a lexile measure of the book overall, but we also calculate um, lexile measures for each chapter of, of a book. 
And so for some of our books, we can look at um, Lexile measures that vary by chapter. And so I'm just going to very quickly um, go to our list of results. We've done this, as you can see, for about almost 4,500 books. So, for example, in my high school English class, uh, I may be teaching the, the nonfiction book, Friday Night Lights. And so I can actually look to see what are the lexile measures of individual chapters in this book. And so you can see that overall, this book has a lexile measure of 1220. But the very first chapter in Friday Night Lights has a lexile measure of 1400. And obviously that's considerably higher than almost all, in fact, all of the other chapters in this book. So chapter one, if I have a student who's maybe not reading at that 1220 lexile measure, chapter one is gonna present an even more overwhelming sense of complexity for that, that child. Chapter one may be where I wanna invest some time into slowing down and teaching that chapter carefully to build that success with my students so they can be more successful reading these, these other chapters. Likewise, um, you'll notice that some chapters are not that high. In fact, the last chapter uh, measures only 1070 L on, on that Lexile scale. So that's probably a spot where I don't need to do as much scaffolding. And of course, in, in the world of secondary English language arts, we're always talking a lot about doing close reading. Well, some texts and some chapters within texts are better for close reading than are others. And these lexile by chapter measures can help you to identify where are the chapters where I might find a certain section of text, whether it's a couple paragraphs, whether it's a whole chapter, whatever it may be, that lend themselves to a closer read. And so obviously in this book, Friday Night Lights, I'm gonna look in chapter one, because that's a place where I might find some passages that are really ripe for a, a close critical read of that text to instill in my students, not only the, to reinforce the skills they needed in close reading, but also to examine the content that might make them more successful readers in, in subsequent chapters. So that's a quick overview uh, of our find a book tool. Again, primarily this is designed for students to use, but that's not to say that educators can't find some very, very valuable and important uh, instructional information that might inform their planning about how to teach um, certain books. So the second tool uh, that I want to introduce you all to, let me go back to the kind of the main page, is actually over here on the far right, the Lexile Analyzer. And the Lexile Analyzer um, seeks to address that issue that you may have when you have a, a piece of text that you really want to utilize in your classroom, but you don't know the lexile measure of that text. For example, um, maybe you find an article or, or you find um, some sort of current events type thing, or maybe you just have the, the digital text of an article and you wanna know the lexile measure. I'm dragging over here for a moment. Um, this article I found this morning on Yahoo News, um, it's a report saying that Par Paul McCartney says John Lennon was responsible for the Beatles breakup. As you can see here, um, this text was written or at least published uh, last year, yesterday afternoon at about three o'clock. Obviously this text is so brand new, it doesn't yet have a Lexile measure. However, I can use the Lexile analyzer uh, to measure this text and get an estimate of its difficulty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to copy the text from this article. And notice I'm even copying the pictures. I, I'm not worried too much about this. 
And this is actually something different. Uh, for those of you that have used the Lexile Analyzer in the past, you may remember it used to require you to submit a TXT file and you had to edit the text in certain ways. All of those complications are gone. So now with the Lexile Analyzer, I can take any news article, anything I can find a digital copy of, and literally copy and paste the text of that article or, the, or that selection right into the Lexile Analyzer. And when I click this blue button that says Analyze, literally, watch how fast this happens, the system returns an estimated Lexile measure. So this article about Paul McCartney and the Beatles uh, could be between 1010L and 1200L. And beyond that, the system goes even a little bit further. Right here on this first tab, it identifies the longest sentence in this article. So again, if this is an article I'm gonna teach, and I know that this is the longest sentence in the article, I, I may wanna take a little time and kind of examine this sentence to break down the syntax that's used and, and better understand. If I click on the indicator tabs, um, we see those two components of the Lexile measure again, sentence length and word frequency. And just like the previous text we looked at, you see here that it's the sentence length that makes this relatively more complex than does its vocabulary. So these are fairly familiar words, but pretty complex sentences um, that we're dealing with. And in fact, if I click on vocabulary, uh, the system will even identify, again, vocabulary words from this article that students may need some help with. So for example, the word instigate. And if I scroll down here, uh, actually I gotta click on it and do it. Uh, the system will even highlight that word and where it's used. So the word instigate is used in the caption of that picture that I copied, um, but that same line is used later in the, arg in the article it itself. So instigate, cohesive, repressive, intimate, uh, demise, all of these are words used in this article um, that I might wanna spend some time um, discussing with my students to make sure they understand the intricacies of the meaning uh, of these words. And again, because you've registered your account at the Lexile and Quantile Hub, everything that you submit to the Lexile Analyzer, we keep a record of. So up here at the top, if I click on history, I can go back through and find all of the text that I've submitted to the Lexile Analyzer across time. Obviously, you see that I have quite a, quite a few here. Uh, but I may remember boy, last year when I taught this unit, um, I, I had a great article and I remember I put it in the Lexile Analyzer. I sure wish I could find that again. Well, you can go back through your history and you can find just that. Um, so here's a little um, fable that I had measured at one point uh, a while back. Uh, and I can go back in and I can actually find that selection of text again. All the same information is there. The indicators, the vocabulary, the longest sentence, it's all right there. And because I created that account, it's all saved for me. So I can find it again quickly and easily. So you may also notice um, up here in the upper right hand corner, um, we can do the very same thing, not only for English text, but we can use Spanish text as well. Using our El Sistema framework, we can find a, a Spanish lexile measure for articles written in Spanish. Um, so if you have bilingual students, uh, you can certainly utilize find a book uh, to do the very same thing in Spanish that you can do in English uh, as well. Okay, so that's our Lexile Analyzer tool. Again, that's a great tool for when you have most often a very recent piece of text. Think of an article, um, 
something like that current events uh, that you do not have a Lexile measure for, but you'd like to find. You can submit uh, the full article or a sample of that article and get an estimated Lexile measure to describe its sentence complexity, its vocabulary complexity on that, that Lexile scale. Another tool that I wanna show you all here, keeping an eye on time to make sure I have plenty for this, and I do, um, is our word list tool. And what the word list tool does is it reports out the most commonly used um, terms, vocabulary words, in a variety of different content-based uh, textbooks. So for example, if I teach middle school social studies, I can identify uh, the grade six through eight text band. I can identify that I'm looking at social studies textbooks, and I wanna see what words most commonly appear across the most popular social studies textbooks at the middle school level. I did identify my criteria, I click download, and voila, it produces a list of me for me uh, of all the most commonly used words in, in middle school social studies textbooks. Words like dynasty, landlocked, Confucianism, um, diaspora, opposition, connotation. All of these words appear more frequently in middle school social studies textbooks than do other words. So if they appear more frequently, obviously these are words that I want to teach or at least reinforce for my students. So even if I'm teaching social studies, I can still do some vocabulary work that's gonna build the vocabulary of my students. And obviously, these are social studies content words. I am helping them understand social studies content, even though I'm using a reading tool. I can do much the same, uh, even if you have colleagues in your building say, well, I'm a math teacher. I don't teach reading. Um, I beg to differ. In fact, if I look at the high school math textbooks, I can generate a similar kind of list. And in the math textbooks at the high school level, we see words like calorie, spreadsheet, percentile, collinear, trinomial, horizontally. There's a lot of content area teaching that's critically important to help our students be successful readers. So even if your primary job is not to teach reading, you can reinforce the kind of reading skills in the area of vocabulary, even while still teaching your subject matter, your content. And the Lexile word lists can help you do um, just that. So a very quick uh, tour of our word list tool. You all can get in here and play with this and explore these other resources uh, to your heart's content. One of the questions we often hear, uh, and we hear this often from uh, building administrators, testing coordinators, even some classroom teachers, they wanna know that, well, you know, student A has a Lexile measure of, of 770L, and how does that child's Lexile measure compare to other students at that same grade level. Well, the Lexile grade level charts can help you figure out that information. So very quickly, um, you can input, and I'm just going to use my daughter, uh, again, that sixth grader as an example. Um, she's in sixth grade. You know, here we are near the beginning of the year. Um, and so you can see here that in the beginning of the year, um, that 50th percentile sixth grader, and is, a, is at a 990 Lexile measure. Again, on average, looking across the country, the 50th percentile sixth grader is at a 990 L. Likewise, the 90th percentile sixth grader is at a 1300 L. This goes back to the idea of the range of student reading abilities. 
we, we see in any classroom. In fact, you'll see these sliders here on the left. I can slide this down and, and change. And notice I can go all the way down to the 10th percentile. So in sixth grade, I likely have students that range from about 685 L all the way up to 1300 L. That's the range I'm trying to cover in, in my sixth grade instruction. And this is why differentiation is so important because every child comes into our classroom with different needs, with different abilities. And my job as the classroom teacher is to begin to address those needs. At the same time, I'm teaching those grade level expectations for, for sixth grade. Um, so one last tool that I wanna share with you all, and really I'm gonna kind of highlight two tools at once here as I do this. Uh, the last tool I wanna share with you is our, our Lexile Growth Planter. Um, this is a tool that we use to not only track prior performance on state assessments, but also to forecast future growth in the area of reading. So what this tool does is it asks you to input a Lexile measure uh, for a, a certain student. And so I'm gonna do this very quickly here for that daughter of mine, that sixth grader uh, that has a 770L. And I'm gonna input those data points and what we see in the jet in the in the graph that's generated, we see my daughter's. Let me see if I can blow this up for you all, so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, and I'm sorry, it is still very very small. Um, my child, that sixth grader, that's the, the horizontal axis of this graph here, grade level, um, has a a 770 lexile measure, and the vertical axis is that lexile scale. So we've plotted um, my child's current Lexile measure. And what we see in the background, you see this kind of broad green swath. This represents what we call our pathway for reading readiness. In other words, where ideally would we like to see a student's Lexile measure fall so that we can say with confidence, yes, this child is on his or her way to becoming college and career ready in the area of reading. And so you can see for sixth grade that that pathway range is quite a bit above uh, my daughter's Lexile reading measure of, of 770L. In other words, we can't say with confidence that my child is on that path to becoming college and career ready. We know She's gonna need some remediation. She's gonna need some intervention if she's going to reach that point by the end of high school. In fact, the system then forecasts her current growth rate. In other words, mediation without intervention of any kind. If my daughter continues growing at that same rate, we can follow this black dashed line forward through her middle school and high school years and see that she's forecast to graduate high school with a Lexile measure of just under 1100 L. And obviously this is not ideal. Well, just how unideal is it? If you look here, these three colored bars, this orange bar represents the average difficulty of freshman level textbooks at a university, and you can see the gap that exists. Those textbooks at the university range from about 1300 L up to about 1460 L. Likewise, this yellow bar represents the difficulty of freshman level textbooks at the community college. And even here, my daughter isn't gonna make it. Those books range from about 1200 to about 1360 L. And then finally, uh, this blue bar represents texts uh, that students are asked to read in, in the workforce. And again, it's a slightly broader range, um, but they range from about uh, 1140 L up to 1380 L. 
So there's a gap that we need to cover. And so the challenge for us as a family and for my daughter's educators is to follow this narrow, darker green band to see what interventions, to see what remediations that we can do to alter her forecast and try to get her grade by grade to finish high school at about a 1300 L, which is what we consider here at Metametrics to be that, that college and career ready benchmark, that goal of 1300 L um, as a reader. But as I said, um, this blue bar represents workplace readiness in the area of reading. And as I said before, here at Metametrics, we are measuring individual occupations. And in fact, you see this purple button that says add edit career. If I can click on this, I can actually drill down into over a thousand different occupations. And I can look to see exactly what the requirements are in the area of reading for a particular career. So let's say a child says, when I grow up, I want to be a machinist. We can go into the manufacturing career cluster. We can drill down into the individual occupation of a machinist. And let me zoom out here just a little bit. And so that we can see that a machinist is asked to read text from about 1250 L up to 1310 L. So my daughter on her current trajectory, if she wants to be a machinist and she's gonna graduate high school with about 1100 L Lexile reading measure, she's still gonna be well below the kinds of text that she's going to encounter in her first year as a machinist. Employers are going to be handing her these tests, texts and saying, here, read this. And my daughter is going to find those texts to be extremely challenging in terms of their complexity, in terms of the sentence structure, in terms of the vocabulary. It's going to be hard pressed for her to read some of those. So here in the growth planner, you can not only see a child's forecast, but you can make those college and career ready goals more concrete by looking at their exact Lexile measure to determine that ability. And that's the very last tool I will show you. It's the very same information, but if you see over here on the left, if I go into the career database, the career database gives me that same information for each individual uh, occupation that I see. So I can go in again, manufacturing, I can go into the machinist career, and when I click search, it gives me that range um, that I can begin to, to kind of look at. And so students and families and counselors and classroom teachers, you know, we can explore different careers. Not that we're trying to say, oh, you're cut out for this career or you're not cut out for that career, but we can begin to make concrete our goals for our own students' learning, to begin to look at what are the reading expectations that you're gonna face in your chosen career or in your post-secondary plan, to try to make this information actionable um, for individual readers. So with that, uh, we have just a few moments left I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint presentation here uh, for just a minute and give me just a second. I'm going to scroll toward the end uh, because I want to share with you a couple of pieces of, of really important information. Um, we want you all to take some time um, to poke around in the Lexile and Quantile Hub and see all that it has to offer. But we know you may need some help along the way. And that's why Jane and Dave and I host what we call office hours. Um, every Monday uh, in, the, in the afternoon and every Friday morning, um, we're available online uh, at a Zoom link, very similar to this, uh, where you can pop in, get the information that you need, and then pop right back on out and get on with your day. So as you have an opportunity to explore these tools, and you have questions about how they work 
or you have questions about how you might use them either in the classroom or in encouraging parents to use them at home, if you find yourself with questions, jump into our office hours. Um, we're more than happy to help you find the answers you need, get the guidance, the advice that, that may be helpful uh, so you can make the most uh, of these tools. Again, uh, these tools are available to you completely free of charge uh, based on North Carolina's relationship with Metametrics. And we really want to see you all um, get the biggest bang for your bucks uh, that you possibly can. So with that, uh, we have a couple of minutes left here. Uh, I'm going to pause and we can open up this up for any questions that you may have. Um, Jane, if there's any questions that we need to address uh, from the Q&A, uh, please speak up and let me know that. Uh, but I would encourage any of you, if you have questions, uh, unmute your microphone. Uh, we're certainly happy to talk about those now. So what questions uh, do you folks have? Hey, Matt, I'm going to go ahead and send this out to you as I'm not the fastest typist in the crayon box here. Um, Michael asked if there is a tool available to test a student's Lexile level. And I'll resend that uh, link that I sent earlier, but if you'll address that from a metametrics side of things, I'll get that link right back into the chat box. A absolutely. And Michael, that is a great question and one that we get asked um, very, very often, actually. Um, and, and one thing about metametrics and the work that we do, we do not have a proprietary test that measures lexile or quantile ability. In other words, if you, if you go to Google and, and you, you Google lexile test, you won't find anything. Um, here at Metametrics, we don't believe in creating more tests for students to take. We believe that we ought to be getting more from the assessments we're already administering to students. And so I believe what Jane is posting uh, there in the chat room is a link to the full list of the more than 60 different assessments that report a Lexile measure. So chances are your building or your district is already utilizing one of these assessments to derive a, a Lexile measure, just as the state of North Carolina is doing with the end of course and end of grade assessments in grades three through eight and, and English two. So there's a variety of different sources where you can gain a Lexile measure for a student. We don't care what test you're using. We want to help you take that Lexile measure for that child and make it actionable to give you the resources you need to plan instruction and encourage that child to engage in material at their level, uh, whether they're in the classroom or outside the walls of the classroom at home. Does that make sense? Jane, are there other questions that um, folks have? Uh, no, I think that that catches us up to where we are. And just a quick message. Some of you may have noticed that the links were chatted twice. The original links went out to my attendees. Those of you that have joined us today, but not everyone is registered in the uh, webinar as an attendee. So several folks were missing it because of the category that they have been assigned to. So we rechatted all those. So if you're getting double duty links, that's a good thing. Maybe you will catch one that second go round that you missed the first round. So sorry about that folks, but I believe now all the links are out there and um, that's it from my side of things, Matt, and I don't see any more questions. So folks, feel free to jump in. All right. Well, again, um, what Jane said, it's better to receive it twice than not to receive it. <laughs> You're actually going to get it one more time. <laughs> because I have been copying and pasting what Jane has been putting in the chat. And um, anyone who registered for um, today's webinar, whether they attended or not, because we know uh, last minute things pop up and we have the best intentions and life happens. Um, I will be sending out um, all of the information that Jane shared in the chat will come to you when I send the email of the recording, which will probably be tomorrow. 
Um, with that, we'd like to say thank you to Matt and Jane. The Hub really is a one-stop one shop resource that is free because of our partnership with Metametrics. We hope our teachers have been able to enjoy exploring the Hub with you and have found value in this resource. Thank you for joining us today. A link will be sent out to everyone tomorrow and you are um, free to share that link with any of your colleagues who perhaps couldn't attend with us today. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Beth. Thanks everyone. Have a great night. Thanks, Matt. We'll see you tomorrow. See you then.